Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. For those of you who have not yet seen or heard Dr. Amora or Rick Pepe, who are with, of course, the, uh, the Amori, it's Amora, it's really Amore, anti-aging, that's how I have to get it, I get confused with your last name and Amore. But if you have not seen any of the uh, any of the websites or you've not seen the Facebook Live, which we're on now, you're really missing out because there's been so much information about lots of good things, mostly stem cells, and that's really important. We already have somebody watching. <laughs> they just waited. Um, Seth Levy, and he's in the medical world too. So Seth, and he bring he actually has a motorized van that goes to places for people, but he needs to know about you. So hello, Seth. Thanks for coming into this. But but I have been so impressed. I've learned so much more about stem cells. And now when people say things to me like they're having a problem with their hip and they don't want to go through an operation, I say, well, have you heard about stem cells? Well, but stem cells. No, no, no well. Just go for a consultation and find out what's going on with it, because why would you not want to do that? See. Stem cells had a little bit of a, it was precarious years ago because people didn't know about it. They had thought they'd have to go to other places outside the country. But you both have really specialized in something, and I'm so appreciative that you come on the radio and share this. So, Dr. Amore, let's, uh, Amora, let's, let's really go through what this is because you've been a chiropractor for so many years. Mm -hmm. yes. And what made you decide to start with stem cells, which was really very innovative. Well, I think, Anita, um, the big thing is chiropractic is always health care, always making sure your, your patients get the best health care naturally. Stem cells, again, is, is a natural process. It's, it's putting back what you had when you were younger and, and actually helping you regenerate tissue and, and, and getting better again. So it, it, they kind of meld together the two, chiropractic and regenerative medicine, they work well together. So that's and how, you and that. how did you meet Rick? What was Rick Pepe doing that you found well, him? Because he is so smart and it's nice to have him in your practice. Tell us what he does with you and why well, you need someone like that. Yeah, Rick and I met many, many years ago. Uh, he's actually a very um, smart uh, person, um, but his big thing was nutrition and Rick uh, is very good with nutrition and medications and contraindications, indications of what to you know, deal with uh, each one. So I met him over 30 years ago and I've known him for a long time and I said, well, if you ever get a chance and you're not working at the place you're working at, you know, why don't you come work with me? And, and it just happened to turn out the last whatever year he was able to do that and now he works with me. And so he is our patient educator uh, with the different patients that come in, and he and he helps out in so many ways. Uh, besides, um, you know, the patients need to understand all about stem cells, all about nutrition, all about what they can and cannot do, and, and he's like the go-between. So he helps out in that situation. That's his, his strong point, and and that's how we brought him aboard. And so he's done really well for the office, and and that's what we we've been utilizing him in that capacity. Because education is everything. So, Rick, yeah. as a matter of fact, we have another person watching, Lindsay, who I know very well, and she's had a lot of physical problems, but I, I just want to go through this. So when someone calls you or they, you know, they want to come in, tell me what your first response to someone is. Tell me what, first of all, what they say to you, and then what do you say to them? Well, basically, you know, I want to find out what their condition is, you know, what's been ailing them, and try to go through the process of trying to, you know, try to figure out the situation to help them in the long run. And when they call in, a lot of times they're more, they want to learn more about what we do. You know, they want to learn more about the stem cells, how they work. You know, of course they ask if it's covered by insurance. And again, you know, I tell them it's not covered by insurance. And basically just go through the whole, you know, the whole process with them just to, to educate them on, you know, on basically on um, how the stem cells work and how, you know, the difference between uh, stem cells and also surgery, you know, the, diff the big differences. You know, surgery should be a last resort. You know, you want to go through other protocols first, then, if necessary, then surgery would come into place. 
And I know that we've talked about not having insurance before, but I thought of a lot about this, and I have to be very honest with you that there are a lot of doctors now that have become concierge doctors. And they, there's a doctor I happen to know of who does hip and knee surgery, and he charges $5,000 for you just to be with him, whatever he does. And then I think the hospital's paid for, but all the other stuff you have to pay for him. And so there is something that's happening in society. I think people want the very best, and they're equating the very best, not so much with insurance, but how good is that physician? How good is the operation? That's the ultimate. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, again, you know, the you know the physician makes a big difference. You know, we have Dr. Anthony, who is a fantastic, you know, fantastic doctor. Um, he, you know, obviously went to school to learn how to, you know, to do the stem cells. You know, and he's he's been doing great. I mean, all the patients that he has seen, they love him, and he's very compassionate with the with the patients. You know, and that's that's the most important thing. He's yeah. very thorough. That's another important thing, and. And the, you know, concierge medicine has been around for a while, but that's it definitely is breaking out now. And I, I, you're right, uh, Anita. A lot of people today are looking for good health care. They're not looking, you know. There's so many plans out there, but they're looking for someone to take care of them when they can be taken. You know, they don't want to wait in the office for, you know, three hours and get. They want to get in and get out. They want, you know, want things done. So, uh, concierge medicine has become really big, and uh, you know, we try to do some of that stuff with. Um, you know, if we have to do labs, we can go into the house and do labs and stuff like that. But um, you know, there there's a lot of things branching out in this whole arena, um, and you have to be on top of you know what's going on. And the changes are happening quick, and so patients are not all up to speed on a lot of things either. So they're they're used to the the medicine, you know, how insurance works and and everything. And we ha every time they come to us, we go sit them down, we go through the whole process of. All right, this is what's paid, this is what's not paid under insurance, and, uh, and this is what it's going to cost. You know, we, we break it down for them, and we make sure they understand what we're going to do and, and how we're going to go about it. So I have the big question. So, okay, you do stem cell, and they go home. But in the middle of the night or the next day, something's happening. They're not happy, whether it's really the cause of <coughs> what was done or just their own anxiety. Are you available for them to call? Because you see... That's not always the case yeah. with a lot of these yeah. HMOs. So yeah. tell me about that, Rick. We are. We're, you know, we're, again, all of our patients that had the procedure done, if they have any type of discomfort whatsoever, I tell them to call as soon as possible. I have a separate phone that I have at the house. It's on with me all the time. So if they need to get in touch with me, they can get in touch with me. I had, a, I had a patient call me last night at 930 last night. On you know talking to him for almost an hour and tell me what you know tell me what went on well basically he you know he you know he came in he's actually from the gym and uh, he's an older gentleman that basically you know he flies for a living he's a you know a captain yeah. and um, you know he has two bad knees and you know he wanted to have you know stem cells done but what happened was he started doing a lot of research which is great but he started talking to a lot of physicians as well so he started asking me, you know, a lot of questions last night about why, you know, about certain, you know, shots that we do, you know, that are only temporary, like, you know, the Dur you know, the Duralane, you know, the soup parts. And, and I try to explain to him, say, listen, those are just band-aids. Excuse me, the, these are like epidurals. Is no, that they're you know? basically, oh, they're like hyaluronic oh, acid, acid. So oh. it basically fills the gap of the joint, which helps with better cushioning. Okay, They're but temporary. It's, it's just temporary. It's just a band-aid. Short term. That's all it is. And the doctors were per telling him that's the same thing as stem cells. And I told him they're not the same as stem cells. Stem cells help with the matrix. Helps create a new matrix for the for the joint. Those other uh, hyaluronic acids do not. They're just temporary compounds just to help with pain, lubri obviously lubrication. Well, sure, help with flexibility, mobility, but again, it's only six to nine months with most of those medications. So and, I and talked I, to him. Excuse me, and I have to say that I believe a lot of those medications could also be troublesome after a while. You have them over well, and over and over again. Yeah, the hyaluronic acids are are not so bad. They're 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 the, not a bad medicine. Um, it's it's hyaluronic is a more natural medication, so it's not it's not going to be a bad thing for you. So we don't really like to inject anything that's bad for your body. We don't inject cortisone at all. 
That's what I was thinking. Yeah. We well, don't do that at all. You know, and with that with that patient, you know, he just was confused because the doctors were telling him you can get it done cheaper. There's cheaper stem cells out there. And again, I tried to explain to him, you know, it's not coming from your bone marrow stem cells. We're not taking That's it from you, re-injecting it back into you. We're using, you know, something called Wharton's jelly, which is basically from the, the blood cord. Those are the stem cells which will help to create the new tissue that needs to be created in that specific area. What you've just said is the key, because mm -hmm. I think that's the confusion, Dr. Amor, yes. that they they think of stem cells, as you said before, you know, and, and if you have inflammation, it's not, you went through a whole thing, yeah. I'd like you to do that again yeah. about the inflammation and not, if you don't want inflammation, you want to get rid of it, and it's this other right. stem cell that does that. Right, so the, the thing, the confusion a lot of it with a lot of patients are, they think that they're, they're getting, they're going to get the stem cell from their body. And you can, but it's not going to be so good for you because whatever age you are, you're not going to have that many stem cells put back into your body. And you're going to create an inflammation process in an area where you took the stem cells from. So say you're getting stem cells injected into your shoulder and you pulled it out of your bone marrow in your leg, in your femur, then what do you think is going to happen? Those stem cells are going to go where the new, the big, you know, inflammation process is going on, which is out of the leg. So you're really not going to do yourself justice, and you're actually going to lose out. So we get stem cells from full-term pregnancies, with the, from the cord blood, the Wharton's jelly of the cord, and uh, <coughs> and when we put in stem cells, we're talking about a billion or more a billion stem cells into that joint. Where if you took it from yourself. You're putting, you know, a thousand, a couple hundred, you know, you're not going to get enough. So, so how, how does it come when, you, when you're saying you get millions of, does it come like in a it vial comes in a, or It's what? in a vial. It's in a vial. It's frozen. It's in a vial and it's processed and it gets shipped to us overnight. And, uh, and then we have to thaw it out prior to the injection and then we draw it into the syringe. And, and, and so it doesn't matter who it's coming from, though? No, because there's no DNA on the stem cell, so it's a clean slate. So once it goes into your system, it matches up with your DNA once it starts formulating whatever tissue it's growing to trying to grow. And, and how do they get those persons to give the stem cells? Is this a, a yeah, they process? Go, yeah, you go to the hospital, to, uh, and this has been going on for years with... Um, you know, a lot of uh, the placenta and, and, the, and, and the, you know, after birth, they want to save that for, you know, future generations. Uh, they want to have stem cells for if something happens to right. their child. So years ago, they used to charge, uh, it was like $750 a year or whatever it was. Or oh, month, absolutely. Or whatever, crazy monthly. Number. Yeah, oh, monthly, I know yeah. some people that do It was a lot this. of money. So now we have a company that does, goes to the, the uh, prospective uh, clients, and they say, listen, you know, we'll go ahead and store your, your stem cells your own we'll do it for you for this price once a year as long as you let us utilize part of it and that's how they do it and i think it's like 99 dollars or 199 dollars for the whole year see no so until you come on this show this is not known i haven't yeah. read articles about it i mm -hmm. don't know anything about it yeah. you really this is a marvelous thing it's, so yeah. it, when you think about it so i mean how many babies are being born but see people if you unless you go to the right maternity right. ward they don't even know about this do they do you have a company, not you, but the com a company yeah, has a company to go does, and yeah. convince people and that they that's they go to it. different hospitals. But you're right. A lot of people don't know about this. And y you have to understand, what's the, what's a big thing today? Recyclable. Everything's reused, right? I mean, I saw the other day I was walking in the store, and they had uh, recyclable plastic bottles from uh, plastic in the ocean or whatever. See, you know, you know, so they're doing all these things. So think about what you have in your own body. Can we utilize that in our body to regenerate things yes we can and that's what they're doing they're taking it from a younger you know, person you know a newborn but you can regenerate tissue and why not why wouldn't you do that why you know well and I bring this up because I have triplet grandchildren who are now going to be 14 and their mother never this was never done nothing happened I always thought they ought to at least do it for their children but it was very expensive to store yes, it, it was. So that's probably was the reason, but if we had all known, so everybody listening now, you should know, if you have a pregnant relative, a friend, if you don't understand it, call Rick Pepe, call Dr. Amora, ask them how this all works. They'll give you the name of where to go, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is so unknown. Yeah. 
So you really are on cutting edge. So, okay, so now you've gotten this, um, you've gotten the stem cells, and and you literally have the vial. And mm -hmm. do you put all of them in at one time? Well, what we do is, uh, if we're going to do, uh, say we do um, two cc's in the knee, all right. So, um, so that's going to be we'll use like Corsite Plus, a uh, Corsite and an Amulsite Plus, or Corsite Polysite. It, it, there's different ones. So we'll inject them into the knee. You know, certain ones ha help to graft the stem cell better. Other ones, you know, produce more stem cells and di differentiate them. And, you know, so there's different things that we can put in there. It depends on the situation. So is, are these big needles, or do you numb no, the area? Like, no, uh, tell you know, me about you this. You numb the area a little bit, and then you, uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, inch and a half needle. It's not so big. You know. uh -huh. And it, what you're saying then is, you first have to evaluate what their problem is. Not everybody needs stem cells. You talked about that before. Right. They come mm -hmm. in, and maybe they've just, like uh, the other day, I must have done something. <coughs> I twisted my hip, and I, I was close to coming to you because I had all this pain. I said, wait a minute. It just happened, and something must have happened. I put on some ice, right. and I took a leave. It was right. gone. gone. Right. That's different than what we're talking right. about, right? You're talking about chronic pain. Right. Something that's, th that's been there for a period of time, like an arthritic condition. Um, which could be enhanced by cortisone shots over the years, you know, or produced by them. Um, but, you know, you're talking about wear and tear, wear and tear. That's, this is what happens. So as we age, our body wears down. It creates osteoarthritis. That's your osteoarthritis. Um, and so, you know, this is what we're trying to combat, you know, some of those uh, joint problems. Um, also, if you're dealing with, um, you know, uh, people that come in and they, and they have um, situations where, um, they, like you said, that they pulled something. You have to evaluate what is it. Is it something that they just pulled a muscle? So I can treat them on the other side. I can do, you know, different treatments in the office. It's not just stem cells. We have a multitude of types of well, treatments. Tell us some of those. So things. we, you know, we besides the massage therapy, the physical therapy, the rehab therapy. Those are three things right there that we do alone that can help patients if they, you know, they're not all need stem cells. So uh, it all depends on the evaluation of this patient what they have, how bad it is, and what we're going to do. And that's how we, do, how we address the patients. Because we're not just going to give everybody a stem cell. We're going to give people what they need, and some people just need a little treatment, you know, and off they go. Because you, you, your profession is a, a chiropractor. And Mine so is. you understand yeah. what you can do and what you can't do and what's going to help, right? right? All right, so let's say that this person that came in goes ahead and has the injection in, in their knee mm -hmm. and you said that it's going to take three months maybe for them really for it really to spread all over to make sure it's protected again right okay are they ever going to have a problem with that knee again well you know it's like anything um you know p once you start growing new tissue it starts to strengthen right and it gets back to you know we still we will look at it, but it's a process that goes through you know you know the first day we do it they're not going to be jumping out of the chair but you know, that first week they might notice some differences. Huh. They might notice, hey, you know, I'm kind of bending a little bit better, I'm doing this, or I have less pain, whatever it may be. As the weeks go by, it gets better and better. And this is how stem cells work. You inject them into the body, they start taking off, and they start growing and growing and growing and implanting and changing the tissue and getting molding, and that's what they're doing. So it goes through this long-term process. And so by the time, you know, three months comes, because that's what we like to look at three months, but it could be six months out, it could be up to a year, but it's still going on. It doesn't stop. And that's what's good about it. And so people will notice, you know, a month out, and then three months out, something different. And so, you know, they'll notice different things because they don't realize they're getting better. And then all of a sudden they're bending, and they couldn't bend before. Um, you know, we had a, pa a patient that, um, she used to have uh, knees. Both her knees would um, uh, pop out, you know, just all the time. So, like, she'd walk and she'll bend. And every time she walked, they'd, they'd pop out and go back in, you know, like a, you know, like a shoulder would come out of a joint and come out. So the stem cells on her, and she got better. And she why, got why was why were stem cells good for that? Well, because stem cells start strengthening the, the, the that area again, that the tendons and ligaments, and the muscles in there, and the and they they don't just work on bone; they work on other things as well. So that's what you have to understand. So if you have some laxity in the ligaments, they can start working on that and strengthening those areas. So that's why that's also good. And, and you know, Rick, I know that Dr. Amora said that he found you and you had been a nutritionist. 
Do you also, when someone's had these stem cells or whatever treatment you've given, do you also include nutrition and talk to them about that? Well, that's the most important thing because, again, you want to keep inflammatory foods out of your diet. Foods that cause inflammation will decrease the effectiveness of the treatment. So it's very, very important to make sure you're taking, you know, foods that are rich, you know, obviously in fruits and vegetables, you know, antioxidants, you know, drinking a lot of fluid, especially, you know, obviously water, the most important thing, you know, just to keep everything, you know, you know, working properly. Um, when you eat a lot of fried foods, saturated fats, you're causing something called, you know, a lot of arcadonic acid to be produced within the system, which is causing more of an inflammatory condition, which is going to exacerbate the problem. It's not going to fix the problem. So diet does play a big role on how you feel too. Some people that just fix their diet, sometimes they notice a difference in how they feel. You know, and that's usually you know the biggest cause of, you know, most people are gluten sensitive. You know, that plays a big role. It's also you know a wheat byproduct which causes more inflammation. I mean, we go down the line, dairy causes more inflammation in the system, more mucus to be produced. So a lot of these type of foods can actually inhibit that process of that stem cell working the way it needs to work. And what about exercise? So let's say someone just had the sh a shot in their knee, their hip. When can, do you want them to start exercising? What do you want them to do? Basically, you want them to basically, you know, it's, there's no downtime. We tell all the patients there's no downtime. They walk out, you tell they them, right? They walk out. And, you know, basically you want to limit your physical activity. No strenuous activity with your legs. You know, again, you want to make sure that these, you know, type of stem cells are scaffolding and, you know, making the matrix they need to make and, you know, progress over time. You know, you don't want nothing to inhibit that effect because, again, if you start doing exercise, what are you doing? You're, you're causing infl more inflammation in that area, and then it's going to cause more damage in that area, and it's going to take longer for that stem cell to take effect. Hmm. So let's say someone comes in with two bad knees. Would you do both at the same time, Dr. Amora? Yeah, you could, yes. You could, yeah, for sure. Already have. Yeah, I've done it already. <laughs> so it, it could be done. And, and again, they'll get, they'll get a deload brace. We'll deload the knee, so we'll take what stress. What does that mean? No, uh, you take stress off the knee. So oh, you're going to give them one of those little braces things? That well, it's a little more than a little brace, but oh. it's a customized brace. Right. And we have to do some um, tune-ups on it. And what we do is when the knees, you, you, uh, when the knees are, you look at an, uh, an arthritic knee, it's generally like tilted down or you see arthritis on one side, and it's closed, the gap is closed on one side. So we deload the knee and we open up that gap. So when we inject the stem cells in there, now we keep that, that knee at that, that spacing like that, and then the stem cells can grow better, and they can attach better, and you know, that's what we do. And they go off and do their normal daily activities. So do you take a lot of x-rays? Can people see on an x-ray what's happening, that there's growing tissue? Right. So you're not going to see. It's bone. Uh, x-ray is a hard tissue. It's only hard tissue. Oh. Soft tissue would be MRI. All right. Um, so what we do is we look at hard tissue with the bone, and we look for, arth if, it, if we're looking for joint problems, we're looking for arthritic problems, and that's what we're looking for first. And so once we do that, we'll take those pictures, show the patient, here's your knees, and we do a bilateral view, so we look at both knees, and uh, we'll, we'll show that patient, this is what's going on, and then we'll suggest, you know, you need stem cells for one or two knees, depending on the knees. See, sometimes you just need it for one knee, and the other knee is being irritated because the bad knee Right, you're using more your good knee and that your ear change, so you don't need stem cell yet, you just need the one knee. And then we've had that happen already, and we, we said, Okay, you, you just need one knee, and they do better. Yeah, I remember when uh, that's right, people have bad hips and it puts stress on the knee, their knee was probably fine before that. So, I think what you're saying is when you have something that's serious like this, take care of it, don't let right. it keep going, right? Compounds all the problems, yeah. you know, just like you know, you're saying, you know, you know, Dr. Diamore is saying, basically, you start compensating on one side. So your hip starts to have a problem, then your lower back starts to take a hit, and then your, you know, your feet, same thing, your ankles, because you're, you're putting all the pressure all on one side, and you're basically destroying everything that's on the other side. But again, we talked about timeline right. with diseases. Most of us, we wait until the end of that timeline, and by that time, it's, by that times it's too late.
That's with yeah. every disease. And there, right. th there's a lot of imbalance going on. This is the big thing, and this is why the correlation between, you know, chiropractic and, and regenerative medicine, there's a lot of imbalances going on. And, and if you can address the imbalances in your body, you can correct a lot of things. And that's really the big thing what we got to look at today. So it's a good time for me to give all the information out about your organization. And so let's start with your phone number. Actually, that's important. The phone number is 954-755-0224. And the, the um, website is Amore Anti-Aging, A-M-O-R-E-A-N-T-I-Aging.com. So it's A-M-O-R-E-A-N-T-I-Aging.com. Phone number again is 954-755-0224. They're located in Carl Springs. And we certainly love having you come in. It's really regenerative medicine, so people can look up what that means. And I'm certainly happy that uh, here's just a list of certain things. It's stem cell therapy, hormone replacement therapy, plate, platelet-rich plasma, which is PRP, facial and hair re restoration, we didn't talk about that, or joint re rejuvenation, we have physical therapy, massage therapy, and if you're having some problems sexually, Sexual that's another thing that will be all part of that next wellness. Week. We should talk about that next week. Yeah, yeah, next week we will. So it's always wonderful having you come here and letting everybody know that there is, we've had quite a few people listening. It's, it's important because I don't have anyone else that talks about this, actually. I mean, I've had over, over a period of time, but it's never been like this. You mm -hmm. both are so down to earth and you're... I think you finally fig figured out a simple way to make all this happen. So we appreciate your being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.